Now, as you just saw there all morning, Derek all morning. has been helping to signal the ships, God love the ships, <laughs> signal the ships in safely in Dublin at Poolbeg Lighthouse. There's nothing he in can't you do. Come, in you come. There's nothing he can't do. Uh, now he's taken some time out from his important duties to learn about the history of the lighthouse itself. He's ready for us straight away. <laughs> yes. Good come man in. yourself. In you come, yes. Derek. In you come. We're signaling the ships, guys. <laughs> ease her in, ease her in. Good morning. Welcome down here. We're at the very tippy top of Poobeg Lighthouse. Can we just take a look at this incredible view out into the Irish Sea? Uh, these are actually hard hats as well. Uh, hear them there. There we go. Lar, uh, health and safety, big priority here. Very, very big priority, yes. <laughs> anyway, Lar uh, Joy is with us and Lar, you are the Port Heritage Director down here. Uh, first of all, before we talk about this beautiful lighthouse here itself, the important cultural and historical significance of the Great South Wall. Tell us about it. So the uh, Great South Wall um, has been here since the 1790s. So uh, it's a national monument. Um, oh, it, I didn't know that. Like. Yeah, it has a lot of preservation orders on it. It's, uh, if you like, it's you know, it, it's a Georgian construction. Um, and it started uh, being built in 1720. So it took a long time to come out here. Uh, a lot of uh, kind of failed attempts to come out, a lot of storms and you know, falling, kind of falling back. But eventually it was completed in 1790. Um, and... Uh, uh, it's still important today because it keeps the port open. So we've got the North Bull Wall, the South Bull Wall, and both walls uh, keep all the sand away from uh, the port and from the what we call the channel, and that allows the ships to come in and out. Um, so it's a vital piece of um, uh, infrastructure, uh, but well over 250 years old. So it stops the port really from getting clogged with sand? Yeah, I mean, the big thing along the East Coast is uh, all the, the harbours and ports along the East Coast are very shallow, so uh, silting is a big problem. Uh, and what the River Liffey does, it just pu pushes out all that sand uh, because between ourselves and North Bull, uh, lighthouse is about 300 metres uh, distance. So that narrowing of the channel uh, solved a problem that Dublin suffered uh, for years uh, up to the, the kind of uh, 1800s um, that was very difficult to come into because uh, the channel uh, would silt up. Some days there would be a sandbar, the next day the sandbar would be gone and then you know, ships would get stuck. So the whole area behind you, there's about 300 wrecks uh, in this whole area. Um, so it's, it's, it kind of shows you how dangerous it was. Uh, now we've landed here in the lighthouse. In fact, we logged all the gear up 75 steps, right? 75 steps. <laughs> Very, very yeah. narrow step. Not many people get to visit this place yeah. because it's actually close to the public. It is close to the public because uh, it is an important navigation aid for, for the port. Uh, but we have started doing tours. Uh, but as you're wearing uh, the hard hat, we do have to kind of worry about health and safety to bring people up. So we do bring small groups in uh, and we'll be doing tours for the Open House Festival later on this year in October. Talk us through the history then of this lighthouse. So the lighthouse itself is, is first lit in September 1767. Um, so if you like, the, the people building the wall had something then to aim for. Um, and again, it's important because this area here is, is marking a very dangerous stretch of water um, and uh, it would have been first lit by candlelight then later on um, paraffin oil and then eventually by diesel it's quite a big facility it was the lighthouse you also had a series of small ancillary buildings beside it which have now been taken away but what you have here is a lighthouse that stood here since 1767 and now of course you're gone green We've gone green because uh, powering it is uh, solar panels and a, a, a windmill, a small little windmill on, 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 the, on the balcony up here. Um, and that kind of keeps the light. Again, the light doesn't have to be as strong as it would have been 50, 60 years ago, because now we've got uh, GPS, we have uh, a VTS, which is a vessel tracking system. It's equivalent to a kind of air traffic control in the central port. And that team there would have a, a bank of radars and screens, and they know exactly what ships are coming in and out of. And they're responsible for all, every kind of vessel, be it a, a small uh, boat to one of the big cargo ships that are coming in. And each day we get about uh, 25 ships coming in. Now, not only do we have Poobay, this beautiful red lighthouse here that we've seen shots on screen, we also have three other lighthouses in the, the bay here itself. Yeah, so uh, Irish Lights operates all the, the lighthouses around the, uh, the island, but we actually have our own four lighthouses. So we've got Poolbeg, uh, you have North Wall, which is just over there, the green one, and then you have North Bank, uh, which is uh, just not too far from Clontarf. And then in the centre we have uh, the North Wall Extension Lighthouse. And then right behind that, then, we have the UNESCO Biosphere Reserve. Yes, yeah, so we're surrounded by nature reserves, um, and it's a very important area for migratory birds, um, and that's why it's designated as that. So we've got the UNESCO Biosphere, um, and then um, every area that touches uh, the port now uh, has a, um, a nature reserve. And later on during the summer, we're going to open up a greenway to give you access to that on the north, north port. Yeah, so this has been something you've been working on. Uh, greenway, very important to connect, I suppose, north and south, right? Yeah, no, it's what we're trying to do 
do is open up the port. Uh, it's something called Port City Integration. A lot of ports around Europe are now doing this. Uh, and it's got people that come in down to the ports and see how they operate. Um, and this new one will bring you directly into the Holyhead ferries. So you'll be able to cycle from the ferry or to or from the ferry uh, on a greenway uh, without having to, to deal with the, the, the truck traffic. And, and I mean, you're talking a lovely, what is it, 50, 60k cycle then from top to bottom? You can start start here, work the way all the way, way up way to Holt and, and then come down. Uh, and eventually we'll be building another greenway, which will bring you down to uh, the East Link Bridge, which will connect you over into uh, to Dorky, and Dunleary Dorky. And yeah, and I suppose, as you said, it's all about opening up Dublin Port. Yeah, no, we're, we're keen to get open it up and get people around. Um, and as you go around the greenway, there'll be areas to stop and, and uh, to see the port. And, and kind of see areas that only port people would see uh, normally. So it, it really is opening up. Back to the lighthouse then here itself. How was this structure actually built? So the structure was built by a gentleman called John Smith in uh, from about uh, 1760s to 67. It was a small, squat um, uh, lighthouse. Um, with the balcony actually and uh, stairs on the outside and then a light on top. But then in the 1820s, uh, gentleman called George Halpin then b- extended up. So you've got a mixture of a Georgian and a Victorian lighthouse. So he created this nice slender building that you see today. And George Halpin is known as the uh, grandfather of lighthouses because um, in 1810, for some reason, the London Parliament decided that uh, Dublin Port was going to be responsible for all lighthouses. So well as being the port engineer and he built huge parts of the port, he also built about 52 lighthouses around the whole island of Ireland. Wow. Uh, until his death in the 1850s. And then the Irish Lights was established in the 1860s. They took over that responsibility. And there used to be a little cottage here in the grounds, but that's now gone. That, so there were lighthouse keepers living out here uh, until uh, the 1960s. 1964 is when it was electrified. Um, so there would have been large tanks for the fuel and then a, a, a cottage then for the right. lighthouse keepers. Um, obviously, people uh, can't come down to visit, but you do have the open house series, as you mentioned, uh, Tines, up and running. Yeah, but also the, the wall you have to remember is also open. So uh, we've got between 300 and 400,000 people walk the wall each year. So it's a hugely popular area, especially on a beautiful day like this, to come out and see, walk into the bay and see the sea. Um, and then, of course, you've got the ever popular uh, Half Moon uh, Swimming Club at the Old Battery. Absolutely, and we met them earlier on. Where can we find out more online? If you go to DublinPortArchive.com for more about the history of the port or DublinPort, uh, DublinPortCompany.com for the company details. Uh, before we let you go, I know your daughter, she's doing her leaving search <laughs> later on this summer. <laughs> Maeve is uh, a week and a half to go, and I wish her the best of luck with the exams. All right, fingers crossed. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. us here. Really, really enjoyed Thank our you. chat and for opening up the light house here uh, for us here this morning but for now back to you guys in studio this that is fantastic stage look, passes at the the fe- look, at that. look at a lovely morning there in Dublin is that gorgeous. gorgeous absolutely beautiful thank you so much Derek now